Hello, welcome to Pro Tips number 42, where this month I'll be taking a look at Landsweeper and combining it with a remote desktop solution. Uh, specifically, I'll be taking a look at Devolution's remote desktop manager. Um, there are obviously quite another ones. The one actually that I use a lot of time is M Remote. Um, those, both of those tools I found were quite popular within kind of the sysadmin community. Um, so I took that in feedback as kind of a way to start this topic and take a closer look at what you can do, how you can use Landsweeper and the Devolutions Remote Desktop Manager, and also how you can integrate it. So we're gonna take a look at not just how you can use the, the basic, oh, let's import my assets into the tool, but also more advanced. Okay, how can you, if you do use the kind of SQL database version of the Remote Desktop Manager, how you can link that to the Landsweeper database and really create your own custom integration on-premise then. Um, so to give you some background on remote desktop in general, Landsweeper used to have a remote desktop tool built in. Uh, LS Remote is what it was called. However, we deprecated that back in 2020 um, because it was quite outdated. Um, and obviously there are companies out there, tools out there that are specialized at remote desktop management. So we let them do the heavy lifting for that part of the uh, functionality. We do still allow you to start Windows Remote Desktop sessions um, using the kind of the built-in Windows Remote Desktop uh, functionality, but obviously that's quite different from a Remote Desktop Manager where you're able to really manage a lot of different devices. Um, if you just use the built-in Windows functionality, it's more to just launch a one-time session um, or you know you do it one by one, not really to manage those devices as well. Whereas Devolution's uh, Remote Desktop Manager really has a lot more options. Um, it has additional extensions that you can use, uh, scripts, etc., that you can run if you want. Um, so there's a lot more management there as well to work within your teams. So if you do have a larger IT organization, uh, you're able to configure credentials, import credentials, manage those, how those are shared, etc. Um, so it makes the whole kind of remote desktop managing a lot easier if you have a large organization or a large team. So uh, I'm going to start by heading into my VM and I'll show you there exactly what my setup is like, what scripts I use or what you know, SQL code I used. Um, that will all be available as well as some reports for you if you want to do kind of a manual CSV import. I'll provide some reports for that as well. Um, but it will all be also documented in the text-based version of the pro tips. So if you want to really get the details, if you want to get the scripts, everything, anything that I show here, just make sure you head over to the blog version and you'll be able to find all the resources there. So let's get started. So now that I'm in my VM, I'm going to start by opening the Remote Desktop Manager. Um, this will already have kind of my custom integration set up into it. So you'll see that it's already populated. Um, but in order to do... Um, the basic kind of import of assets, it's not that difficult. You can just head over to File, Import, um, and then it will be here where you can import it uh, using the CSV file. Um, you can simply select your CSV file, then it will ask you to match some fields, and you're off, basically. So this is the basic method. Um, again, you can find the reports um, that you can use to import all of your assets in the blog. But um, the part that I'm going to go over more is really the custom integration. Now, there are a few prerequisites for this. Uh, obviously, this is not officially supported by Landsweeper. Um, so if you do run into issues, our support team won't be able to help you. Um, this is more of a thing for the people that are enthusiasts and like to uh, play around with uh, their, their databases, basically, um, and, and want to do this custom integration. Uh, secondly, you do need a licensed version, uh, so the paid version of the Devolutions Remote Desktop Manager. There is a free version, but the free version doesn't allow you to set up a uh, SQL database vault, as they uh, name it, so basically um, the storage location for all of your data and credentials, etc. Um, so you will need the licensed version. Currently, I'm just using the trial version to show this off. Um, I'm not quite sure how expensive it is, but you'll find out, I guess, uh, if you try and grab it yourself. So those are the prerequisites. Make sure you, uh, you know, you're confident with not it, it not being supported, and you need the paid version. Once you have it all set up, um, you'll need to make sure that your data or your vault is uh, a SQL database. So here I have created a uh, kind of a test database that I'm using for this specific installation. 
Um, and I'm going to actually jump into uh, SQL Server Management Studio to show you as well what it looks like there. Uh, in my scenario, I've specifically put both databases in the same instance. Uh, if you if your setup is different, if you know in your organization you you know you have to use different instances or whatever, um, you obviously need to make sure that uh, you know those databases can communicate with each other. So that is also another prerequisite. Uh, if you're not using two databases in the same instance, you could use something like you know linked servers or something like that to achieve the same uh, the same thing basically. So now that our SQL Server Management Suite is open, you can see here we have the two databases, Devolution Remote Desktop Database and the Land Sweeper Database. Um, I have created two queries that I'm using to basically um, port over or put over two things. Um, and then I'm going to jump back to the Remote Desktop Manager here to show you. So the first script or the first uh, SQL query that I have will basically just take all of the devices that are in all the Windows, Linux, Mac, and Unix devices that are successfully scanned in your LAN Super environment. Um, it will take a look at those, compare them to any device that is already in uh, your Devolutions Remote Desktop Manager. Um, it will do that based on the name of the device and the IP address. And as long as there is not a conflict, so as long as there is, you know, that device isn't already in there based on those two parameters, uh, it will import those new devices into your Devolutions Remote Desktop Manager. The second component of that is the groups. So uh, the Desktop Manager or the Remote Desktop Manager lets you group your devices in different folders. As you can see here, we have basically one local subnet group here um, and one undefined one. Um, I'm also importing groups. Um, the groups are based on your IP locations. So before you run all of this, I would highly suggest that you take a look at your LAN Super installation and you ensure that your IP locations are configured correctly. Um, and that way, you also have it nicely configured in your remote desktop manager. It'll basically have all of your IP locations as folders and all of the devices that are in those IP locations within those folders. So basically, one import, will everything will be already in there and organized for you. So. Um, Again, you can find the reports in the blog version. Um, once you have the reports, uh, once you have them downloaded, the way that I did it is I use the SQL Server Agent, um, which lets you basically create scheduled jobs. Um, you know, it just basically means it runs a specific query every X you know number of times or you know every midday. Um, the one that I have here, I think I have it set right now to every day at noon. It will run both of those scripts, uh, and both of those scripts do look to avoid any conflict, so you shouldn't get any duplicates. Um, I've uh, done my own limited testing, but again, you know, this is kind of a hacky way to do it. So, um, you know, things might always go wrong. Just keep that in mind. Uh, make sure you have your database backup uh, set up. Uh, so that in case anything goes wrong, you always have a backup. So to create a new job, it's not really that difficult. All you need to do is right mouse on the jobs folder here and you can do a new job. I'm just gonna open the job that I have created here. Um, I gave it a quick name. And then the most important thing really is the, the steps where basically all I did was create two different steps. So the first step is to insert the group and I or the groups slash IP locations. Um, if I edit this step, you can see here what my settings are. Um, basically, all I did was just select the script that I had already saved. Um, if I close this, I'll actually show you if I just create a new one. All you need to do is just give the step a quick name, so import x or y. Um, and then once you have the scripts, you've got them saved, all you need to do is just basically select the uh, SQL query that will uh, do what you need it to do. Um, as always, you know, these, these SQL files are just SQL files, so if you want to take a look at them, you can. You can see exactly what's in it, exactly what they do. If you, uh, you know, if you have some knowledge of uh, SQL Server, you'll be able to quite easily understand what's in there um, as well. 
And then once you have that set up, the next step there is to then do schedules, where basically I already created schedule, but the default schedule is I think it starts it's once a week at noon. Um, I think I did it like every day at noon. So you can create your own schedule here, depending on what you want. Um, to do my testing, I even did like once every five minutes just to make sure that it doesn't duplicate things, etc. Um, as of right now, you know, my uh, remote desktop manager still looks fine. So I'm pretty confident that it all works. Um, but you can use it as well if you want to do some testing there. Um, I didn't use any alerts or notifications or anything like that. But, you know, if you want to set up any kind of alerting for errors that might occur or something like that, you obviously can. Um, now to take a look at the scripts themselves, because there are a few things that you might or that you will need to adjust. Uh, so I'm going to minimize all of this, uh, open these, or open one of them, because really it's uh, they're, they're pretty similar, those reports, at least to what you need to adjust. Um, the main thing that you'll need to adjust is obviously make sure that it points to the, to the correct database. Now, the Landsweeper database, that name won't change, but it is the Devolutions uh, Remote Desktop Manager database that will change um, depending on what you've named it. Now, as you know, or as you can see in my case, I've named it DevoRD, um, and you'll find that reference back as well in the scripts. So you'll see here that I reference uh, DevoRD at the top. Um, I think there's another reference somewhere at the bottom here in the subquery. There's another rev, uh, devil RD mentioned there. Um, you can quite easily just find this with, you know, a, a control F, uh, take a look and, and look for the devil RD um, and just replace it with whatever you've named your uh, remote desktop manager's database as. Um, you'll have to do that both in this specific uh, query as well as the other one, which is the one for the insert data one. So we have the insert data and the insert group. You have to make sure that you do that for both. Otherwise, uh, it won't run anyway. Uh, as a test, you can always run them manually. Um, that will also work. So if we just do an execute, you'll see if you get any errors, you'll know that something is wrong. If it runs completely, then it should be fine. Uh, in this case, it's not doing anything technically speaking, because all of my groups and my assets are already in the Devolutions Remote Desktop database. So that's not an issue there. And then once you've done that, all you need to do is open the Remote Desktop Manager. You'll find the same thing that I have here. Um, and I've also added already a credential so I can actually show you and prove to you that it does work, uh, that I'm not just uh, populating things that don't actually work. And there we go. Now I have my remote session set up to my other VM. Um, so this way, you'll be easily able to get all of your Landsweeper assets into this remote desktop manager um, and use it to its fullest extent. I personally, I haven't been able to really discover all the features that the Devolutions Remote Desktop Manager uh, actually has because I've been so busy trying to get this uh, integration to work and all this set up. Um, but, you know, I've actually taken a look at some of the online resources as well. Um, there's a lot of people, a lot of sysadmins that, that highly recommend this tool. So uh, I'm sure that, you know, you'll be able to find some use for it as well, especially if you do a lot of remote sessions. Um, and it is a bit more complex compared to M Remote, which is kind of a more simplistic version. And um, there's some ups and downsides. Obviously, you know, to do this, you will need the paid version. So that's obviously a downside. Um, but if you have the free version, uh, you can still use the report templates that I will provide as well, so that you can use those for the CSV manual import. That will give you at least some part of the kind of integration, let's say, of Landsweeper and the remote desktop manager. Uh, so with that, I think I'm finished here. Uh, I've shown you everything that I need to. Uh, hopefully, it will be of use to you, and you'll be able to use all of your Landsweeper data in the other remote desktop tools that you need as well. Um, and with that, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.